Hello and welcome to another episode. This one is all about the Hyundai Motors CEO Investor Day. Some of the future developments in the presentation will also crop up in the Kia Motors Investor Day, so this will act as a heads up for that. There is a link to the full two and a half hour video above, which has a translated English audio soundtrack where required. There is also a link to the full Hyundai press release above, which also has all the financial details for those who like that kind of thing. I've been through the video and pulled out the following interesting developments. So I don't cover everything, but if you want it all, it's in those press releases. The one thing of the interest to me in this presentation is Hyundai Motors is to move to Android Automotive for future infotainment systems. So where does this leave Gen 5W and our current EV6s with the very recent CCNC in the EV9 and EV3, you may ask. At the moment, Android Automotive will come on new premium Hyundai and Genesis cars starting with the 2026 Genesis GV90. There is a roadmap, as you can see on this slide, that says it will be rolled out for the future models from 2027 to 2029. What is Android Automotive, you may well ask? Android Automotive, also known as AAOS, is a variation of Google's Android operating system tailored for the use in vehicle dashboards introduced in March 2017. The platform was developed with Google and Intel together with car manufacturers such as Volvo and Audi. The project aims to provide an operating system code base for vehicle manufacturers to develop their own version of the operating system. Besides infotainment tasks such as messaging, navigation and music playback, the operating system aims to handle vehicle specific functions such as controlling the air conditioning and stuff like that. In contrast to Android Auto, Android Automotive is a full operating system running on the vehicle's device, not relying on a smartphone to operate. As such, it has access to a limited number of apps on the Google Play Store at the moment, with this list growing over time. Android Automotive is an open source operating system and as such, car manufacturers can use it without the Google Automotive Services, also known as GAS, which are a collection of applications and services, Google Maps, Google Play, Google Assistant, etc. that OAMs can license and integrate into their in-vehicle infotainment systems. Volvo, Renault and Ford and GM are using AOS with GAS, also known as Google Built-in by Google. In order to communicate with in-vehicle networks, such as the CAN bus, Android Automotive uses the Vehicle Hardware Extraction Layer, or VHAL, which serves as a bridge between the vehicle's hardware and software components. Hyundai says this, Hyundai is focused on creating a user-friendly and aesthetically interface, ensuring that the large screen does not overwhelm the driver. The user interface is designed to be highly customizable, allowing users to configure the display accordingly to their needs and preferences. This includes multiple layer options, voice command integration, and haptic feedback. All of this will ensure that the system is both visually appealing and easy to use while on the move. In addition to the large screen, the GB90 implementation will offer full integration with AI connected services and a suite of Google apps. This will allow users to control smart home devices, access personalized content, and receive real-time updates on traffic, weather, and other critical information. Furthermore, the AAOS platform will enable over-the-air updates, ensuring that it remains up to date with the latest features and improvements. Hondo plans to introduce additional third-party app compatibility, making it easier for developers to create and deploy apps specifically designed for the in-car experience. The other announcement that they're, they're pushing forward on more hybrids, they say that down due to demand, this will be on the T-Med 2 hybrid system platform. I think, that's, I, don't, I think it's a retrograde step, to be honest. The company will introduce the next generation TMED 2 system. The enhanced version of this existing hybrid system has achieved the world's highest level of competitiveness by significantly improving performance and fuel efficiency compared to the existing system. This system is slated for integration into production vehicles starting from January 2025. Future hybrid vehicles will be equipped with premium technologies such as smart regen braking and vehicle to load, enhancing product value and cementing Hyundai Motors standing in the market with superior product quality. But you know, just buy an EV. Furthermore, it plans to manufacture hybrid vehicles at Hyundai's motor group's Meta Plant America in Georgia, alongside its dedicated EV models, including the Ionic 5 and the Ionic 9. Rolling out a full EV lineup expansion and new extended range EV or EREV. Basically, this is all an EV with a range extender little uh, uh, engine in the back and a fuel tank. 
In response to recent slowdown in EV demand, well, what slowdown, many will ask, I think the truth is that EV demand is still growing, but not as fast as manufacturers would like. So this is cobblers. The new e-rev will combine the advantages of internal combustion engines and EVs. Hyundai Motor has developed a unique powertrain and power electronics system to enable four-wheel drive with the application of two motors. The operation is powered solely by electricity, similar to EVs, with the engine being used only for battery charging. The new e-rev maximises the use of existing engine to improve customer repeal and secure costs competitiveness with similar EVs by reducing high cost battery capacity. It provides e-rev customers with a responsive EV-like driving experience allowing con consumers to naturally transition to EVs during future demand recovery periods. The new e-rev also offers price competitiveness over EVs through battery capacity optimization, with well, smaller battery, but bigger than the old hybrids and allows both refueling and stress-free charging miles offering a superior driving range of over 900 kilometers, which is far, quite far when fully charged. This vehicle serves as a key bridge to electrification. Hondo Motor plans to begin mass production of the new e-rev in North America and China by the end of 2026, with sales commencing in earnest in 2027. In the North American market, the comp company will initially launch D-Class SUV models from Hyundai and Genesis brands to meet the remaining demand for internal combustion engines with a target of 80,000 plus units. What do I think? I think this is a backward step personally. For the most part, e will end up carting an extra engine transmission and fuel tank around that will probably hardly ever get used and just add dead weight to the, and reduce the range. It's also a, a carbon cost, a waste of carbon. So I think they're just dumb. Anyway, that's my two penneth worth. Then it says the company aims to address the EV deceleration by expanding its hybrid and new e-rev offerings, gradually increasing EV models by 2030 when a recovering EV demand is expected. I think you'll find it'll come before then. Hyundai Motor aims to build a full lineup of EVs from affordable EVs to luxury and high performance models and launch 21 models by 2030 to provide consumers with various options. Growing sales through increased production and diversifying businesses and services. Hondo Motor is making significant strides in its quest to become a global top tier player in the EV market. By 2030, Hondo Motor aims to add 1 million units of production capacity to sell 5.55 million vehicles globally. The company plans to lead the automotive industry whilst expanding into new business and service areas. As part of this plan, Hyundai Motor is targeting sales of 2 million EVs by 2030, further cementing its global EV leadership. To achieve its sales targets, Hyundai Motor will open the aforementioned American Georgia plant ahead of schedule in 2024 and a dedicated EV factory in Ulsan by 2026, adding a production capacity of 500,000 units. To bolster its presence in rapidly growing emerging markets, Hyundai Motor has acquired the Pune factory in India, enabling the establishment of a production system capable of producing a million units. Also, the company plans to maximize the utilization of its facilities in China and Indonesia, whilst actively expanding its market share through its complete knockdown business across the Middle East, Asia Pacific and other regions. This commitment extends globally as Hyundai Motor actively expands HM Gix innovative production technologies from the Georgia plant to other global manufacturing sites. The adoption of advanced vision technology will further enhance product quality. Hyundai Motor is also incorporating logistics robots into its existing facilities, such as in Ulsa. They will also be introducing hybrid options for the Genesis models. Strengthening battery competitiveness through technology diversity, safety and quality. Hyundai Motor plans to expedite the development of next generation batteries, including solid state batteries. That's good stuff. The company is set to continue developing its next generation battery research building, which is scheduled to open at Hyundai Motors Yu Wang Research Institute later this year. The initiative is aimed at reinforcing the company's leadership in next generation battery technology. The company also plans to apply the battery CTV cell to vehicle structure optimized for the company. In the CTV structure, by integrating the battery and the vehicle body, the company can improve battery integration and performance, reduce parts and lighten the weight by 10% compared to the previous cell to pack te technology. So this is basically structural battery like Tesla's been doing. 
By 2030, Hyundai Motor aims to not only use current performance-based NCM nickel cobalt manganese batteries and low-cost LFP lithium iron phosphate batteries, but also develop a new affordable NCM battery to provide a wider range of solutions. This new entry-level battery will first be implemented in volume models, with the company anticipating a battery performance enhancement of over 20% by 2030 through ongoing improvements in battery energy density. Good stuff. Hyundai Motor is also continually advancing its battery safety. The company has already applied battery management system BMS pre-diagnosis technology to its EVs that detects minor battery and abnormalities in real time and alerts the user. The company will expand to battery life management functions based on AI models and improve the accuracy of battery life prediction technology. They also confirm that the cloud-linked BMS safety monitoring system that I mentioned a few weeks back in, in one of my episodes will also work when the car is off, which is a good point. Hyundai Motor has developed a battery system safety structure that prevents heat transfer between battery cells, regardless of the battery form factor, and has continuously applied improved technology to vehicles. Moreover, the company is developing an advanced cooling technology that suppresses the occurrence of flames inside the battery and aims to apply it to mass-produced vehicles by 2026. In the second part of the Hyundai Way, which they've called the whole of this, not Amway, but the Hyundai way. The mobility game changer strategy outlines Hyundai Motors software centric transition strategy. The company is continuously enhancing its products and services based on software and artificial intelligence. It focuses on the development of software defined vehicles, which I've mentioned before, well, I've been going on for years, including an STV pace car and new mobility businesses, leading the transformation into a mobility ecosystem. Hyundai Motor is transitioning to a development system for STVs by incorporating software development methods into vehicle development. The core of STV development includes the creation of hardware devices that can collect a variety of data from inside and outside the vehicle and the ability to control the overall vehicle interface based on software. Utilizing AI and digital twin technology, Hyundai Motor will efficiently manage the real-time operating status of various mobilities and traffic conditions. The company will continuously enhance cybersecurity technology to develop safer and more reliable connected services. Furthermore, by offering a third-party software developer kit, SDK, and app market, numerous IT developers and mobility service providers will be able to develop various services using Hyundai Motors data infrastructure. This will contribute to the, to the creation of the SDV future mobility ecosystem based on 42 dots software technology platform, whatever the hell that is. Hyundai Motor is developing a, a zonal electric, electronic architecture based on a high performance vehicle computer or HPVC for optimized SDV devices in terms of power control and communication. The application of such an architecture can simplify the existing complex vehicle structure, reducing development time and cost and increasing flexibility of software changes, enabling faster improvement and deployment of services and functions. Uh, my comment is uh, the aim is to massively reduce the number of controller chips in the cars, which will reduce cost and complexity and also reduce bottlenecks caused by the slow CAN bus networking, which links it all together. This low latency approach is critical for fast reacting safety systems and self driving functions. Anyway, that's my two pen. So it's a good idea. The company is also building a next generation infotainment system and an open ecosystem, as mentioned at the start, based on Android Automotive. In terms of user experience, Hyundai Motor is focusing on developing its digital cockpit, which will feature next generation user experience interface designs. These designs are expected to enhance the interface between the vehicle and its user, making it more intuitive and user friendly, which is a common criticism of all of the head units we currently have. From the first half of 2026, Hyundai Motor will sequentially apply the next generation infotainment system based on Android or Automotive Operating System, or AAOS, to mass produce vehicles. In the second half of 2026, the company plans to launch an SDV pace car equipped with the HPVC electronics architecture currently under development. This will implement faster and more stable autonomous driving and AI functions and demonstrate new mobility services from, from, and businesses. From then on, Hyundai Motor will expand SDV full stack software technologies to other models, continuously improving and enhancing the driving experience in Hyundai models. 
as for what hardware they put it on um, in the Q&A at the end that they say it could be their own hardware that they developed. Hyundai motor vehicles are set to transform into learning machines that continually improve through AI integration. Yay! This advancement will be based on data collected through SDVs. The integration will not only enhance driving safety and convenience functions, but also improve usability by constantly updating new app services. This seamless connection promises to integrate all movements in the car's daily life, marking a significant leap in vehicle technology and user experience. Over-the-air updates will create a virtual cycle of data-driven SDV advancement with connected service enhancements and mobility service enhancements. Hyundai Motor is to launch autonomous vehicle foundry business. Hyundai Motors plans to launch a foundry business that will sell autonomous vehicles to various global autonomous driving software technology companies. This new venture will leverage the company's hardware development capabilities and manufacturing competitiveness, building on its experience in developing autonomous vehicles through collaboration with Motional, which is the company that they bought, and expanding cooperation with global autonomous driving leaders. Anyway, that was a big long list. That's all for now. I hope you, some of you find it interesting. Thanks for watching.